Okay, a couple of years ago, PCGS CoinFAX started something to honor the coin dealer community. The coin dealers are the people who make it happen. They find the coins for you. They, they have the information that they spread about our wonderful hobby. They make the markets. And so the PCGS CoinFAX, Coin Dealer Hall of Fame, was established to honor those dealers who have made such an outstanding contribution uh, to our industry. And this year, the way we did it was the PCGS Board of Experts, if you go to PCGS CoinFAX down at the bottom, there's all the Board of Experts. They made the nominations and the living coin dealers, John in the Hall of Fame, John Love, Harvey Stack, and David Bowers voted on who should be inducted this year. Uh, we also lost a, uh, one of our members, Hall of Fame members this year, and this person embodied everything that's wonderful about the coin dealing community. Great expertise, tremendous graciousness in sharing the information with fellow collectors and dealers. So I'd like to have a moment of silence for David Akers. And David has joined his predecessors in the great coin show in the sky. So um, the first inductee into the call, Hall of Fame uh, will be Leon Hendrickson. If there was a contest or a measurement of who sells the most coins numerically or dollar value, there's no question who would be number one. The most coins are not sold in New York or Los Angeles or Boston. The most coins unite and sold in the United States are sold out of, Silver, uh, out of Winchester, Indiana, the firm of Silvertown. And that firm was started by Leon in 1967. He immediately became a big player in the burgeoning gold and silver metals uh, marketplace, huge in the 1968 uh, silver certificate redemption, when a lot of coin shops literally shut down their business just to count silver certificates all day long. He was involved in distributing the Redfield Silver Dollar Hoard. He was involved in the Continental Illinois Silver Dollars. Many of the largest transactions in numismatic history. To this day, as I said, Leon sold more coins than everybody, and in David Aker's tradition, with incredible graciousness to his fellow dealers and collectors, and a real love for our hobby and our industry. All the awards, a and &A Dealer of the Year, Lifetime Achievement Award from the P&G, and uh, uh, President of the P&G, by 1980, Silvertown was selling $400 million a year by 1980. And we won't be so crass as to ask what they're doing now. But, you know, 400 million is a lot of money everywhere except Washington. And in 1980, it was even more money than it is today. So it w was with great humility and uh, privilege that for the PCGS Coin Dealer Hall of Fame, uh, we would like to recognize and induct Leon Hendrickson uh, to accept for his father and hopefully say a few words, his son and the driving force of Silvertown, David Hendrickson.
I will say that yes, we do we do, do a little more than 100 billion a year today, but we share that with the government also. Um, it is with um, great honor that I do accept this award on behalf of my father, my dad. Um, he started collecting coins right after he got out of the uh, Navy in World War II, 1945. Um, he started selling coins at the restaurant in the late 40s there. He was a workaholic. He um, had, a, had a restaurant, a roller skating rink, he had a couple hundred acre farm. He um, also worked the U.S. government here ran a rural mail route and ordered mail. Uh, he was, thus growing up, he was, like I said, a workaholic, but his love was for coins. He was selling coins in the Great Boat Restaurant in 1966. And the restaurant business in 1966, we had a nice restaurant in Winchester. Many of you might have been there. <laughs> and uh, in 1966, we sold about $10,000 worth of food in the restaurant, which was a lot of food at that time. But we sold about $100,000 worth of coins. <laughs> so he decided at that year that I think we'll get out of the restaurant business and everything else, and we'll try to sell coins. My mom, she was a little skeptical about the whole idea. She wanted to know where the coin shop was going to be, and we said in the house. We couldn't afford any building or something like that at the time. So in 1967, we were full time in the coin business with the silver certificates hit, and we did about 120 million that year. Dad says, Wow, I think we can make a living doing this. <laughs> so that's what got us started, pretty much so. But my dad. He's always loved the hobby. As he always says, I love the hobby. I love the coins. I love coin collecting. But most importantly, is I love all the people that I've met over all these years. Whether I bought coins with them, sold coins, or just talked about coins, I love the people. And that's kind of been his motto all these years. He's very, very proud now. We have, he has seven of his grandkids working at Silvertown at this time for third generation. I have, um, I have some, some grandkids now. We bought a little penny collection the other day, we talked about collecting pennies. They are, they're 14 years old. I told them, kids, it's time you started sorting pennies. I started before that time, so. So now we've had the fourth generation that are sorting pennies, looking pennies. But it is uh, with great honor that I, I do accept this award for my father. He was sorry he could not be up here. His health is, he's 86 now, still comes to work about every day. Still shakes hands, still buys coins. Uh, as he says, I still love him, I can't, I, can't, I can't stop. Just like these two young men, David and Harder, that they can't stop. They love coins. But he always says he never met a person that he didn't like. And his, his, one of his little mottos was, one is golden, one is silver. All your old friends are, are gold, make new friends, and they're silver. Thank you very much for behalf of my father, Leo. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. Our next inductee voted on uh, by our Hall of Fame members is one of the true giants of all time uh, for the United States coins and to induct him a current Hall of Fame member and one of the true giants in the coin industry, Mr. Harvey Stack. I had some of the greatest dealers and collectors that the East ever had. These club members would meet once a month and they would show their coins, have great discussions, and they were a learning source which we didn't have before. And as I got older, I was able to go to the same kind of meetings and listen to these collectors and talk and learn about coin collecting. The same group also met in New York at a different time 
Well, they try to keep themselves a little bit more uh, elite, which they really weren't, because the Brooklyn Coin Club had really old-time collectors among them, and that was the New York Coin Club. And the New York Coin Club eventually spread out to have a convention by early 1950s, and it spread out, and all of a sudden nine coin clubs made one convention in New York. And it was an early convention period, because I don't know if you know, but the first auction sale in um, coins in the ANA officially was 1939. So the, the organization had started to grow and it started to spread out to more local areas. The, uh, the coins and knowledge acquired, as I said, at these meetings was so valuable and important that it made each of us more aware of what the market was like. Abe Casso uh, developed in this environment, and by 1937, believe it or not, he hung out a shingle, a Kasov professional numismatist. In the early 1940s, he met FCC Boyd, and their friendship led to the sale in the mid-40s of the world's greatest collection, and other collections as well. And, uh, and after his, the Second World War, Abe partnered with Abner Kreisberg and occasionally with Hans Schulman, names also from the past. In it, his interest included a great, um, uh, in having the hobby grow. And he did work for, for, as the, a dealer representative in early years with the American Numismatic Association. The professional collector felt that the dealers were not well, uh, the, the, they were not informed, and Abe, with his writings and cataloging, tried to prove that the dealer was important to the hobby, just like David mentioned before. In 1953, he and Saul Kaplan called a meeting of the major dealers who were available in New York after a coin show. And on my uncle's lawn in Jamaica, uh, Long Island, they set the formation of what became, in 1955, the PNG, the Professional Mathematic Guild. Abe was his first president. He continues efforts to elevate the status of the professional dealer. Therefore, he always had the respect of the dealer, though we all didn't always agree with him. At the same time, in 1952, he led a delegation of dealers and collectors to Cairo to bid on the collection of King Farouk. Among those who went with him were names from the past, Saul Kaplan, Hans Schulman, John Pittman, Gaston DeBello, to mention a few, together with bids in hand from many, many collectors who wouldn't travel that far to, or couldn't go, go that far. During the 1950s, he conducted a number of uh, important sales, and then in 1970, he worked with Ken Brissett on establishing a new form of grading known as the Sheldon numerical system, modeled after the one conceived by Dr. William Sheldon in 1940s for a large sense. At, the, at a meeting in Colorado Springs in 1973, a large group of professional dealers all gathered together with collectors and passed a resolution to adopt the numerical grading system with certain reservations, which I think people are still arguing about to this day. Uh, Kasov, meanwhile, uh, acted as a representative of uh, uh, dealers uh, to many a collector, conducted several sales during the 1950s and late uh, right to the uh, 1970s. During this period, he helped rewrite book on, Judd book on patterns, which he is still being used today with slight modifications. Early in, in life, he developed Shock, uh, a shocking white hair, and as he was always dealing and negotiating to acquire a, a, a deal or a collection or something to do, he picked up the name The Silver Fox. And we all used to kid him about that because he was only a couple of years older than I and he had shocking white hair and, uh, when he was in his early 50s. And he accept, uh, which, which he accepted and always admired, because he always admired the way of somebody like B. Max Mail, who d developed his business away from the general public, and yet had the ability to sell some of the major collections that were in, that you people have 
baby pedigree items from. He or he or he always tried to obtain the and you and live up to the name which he was given to him later in life, which was a dean of the Musmatics, as he was called by many uh, for his great knowledge and his ability to reason when there was a dispute as to origin and things like that. During his lifetime, he continued to advocate the value of the professional dealer and tried to promote the hobby by lecturing, writing about coins and his experiences and therefore made a major contribution to the growth and prestige of the numismatic hobby and the professionals within it. It is with a great honor and pleasure that I induct Mr. A. Kossoff, A. Kossoff, if you wish, to the Numismatic Dealers Hall of Fame. I thank you. When I was given the ballot to vote for this person for the Numismatic Dealer Hall of Fame, I looked at the previous recipients and I couldn't believe that this person just wasn't on the list. It was just an incredible oversight. Uh, the person receiving this is probably the greatest innovator in the history of numismatics. A greater innovator than B. Max Meal, a greater innovator than all of the numismatists and dealers from the past put together collectively. Someone who took a company, started as a book project, and built it into something great. Now I'm going to give Dave Bowers the microphone. Let's be sure the inductee is here. <laughs> Okay, uh, this person, if you haven't already guessed, uh, I'll give you some hints. A few years ago, he and his family camped to Wolfburg, New Hampshire, and enjoyed a boat ride, including piloting the boat on Lake Winnipesaukee. That doesn't work? Okay. Uh, in 1999, the Coin magazine did a survey of the greatest numismatists of the 20th century, of which there were people like E. Mac Mellon. So there were six of them li still living. One of them was our inductee. Uh, that doesn't work? Okay. Back in 1975, uh, I and my company uh, and the inductee wanted to bid on the Redfield collection. The inductee was a, a young man then, maybe a teenager, I don't know. And we formulated a bid with General Mills and uh, we didn't get the collection, but uh, that we, we negotiated, went to Nevada, talked to each other and so forth. Uh, okay, if that doesn't work, uh, a few years ago, uh, this person and I were in Orlando, Florida, going to lunch in the convention center, and uh, uh, we were talking about each other, or talking uh, what we did, and he said, you know, you, I, you might think you're important, Dave, but uh, uh, you don't have someone carrying a sign. And the person there said, blank is unfair. Okay, the reason blank is unfair is because this person, founder of PCGS, well, David, stand up. <laughs> uh, somebody didn't like the group. Uh, somebody had a quarrel with the grading system and the coin didn't get graded right, but David has been a, a really wonderful friend of mine for many, many years, back to even before 1975. And uh, today, it, it, what Scott said is 100% true. Uh, the reason he wasn't nominated earlier is because he said, don't, don't even consider me. But this time around, we had other people besides, when we started this, uh, David was like helping to do this. Uh, and he said, well, don't bring me in. But now that David, now we have a few people in it who can vote, not including David, we voted for David. So it's long overdue. And uh, why don't we all stand up and, and, and applaud David? Thank you very much. Uh, when, when the voters are uh, Dave Bowers, John Love, and Harvey Stack, it's truly an, uh, a really honor to be recognized. Uh, recognition from your peers is, of course, the best honor of all. And I love coins, love being a coin dealer. When the lottery was $540 million, uh, somebody asked me, David, what would you do if you won? And I said, I'd get in my car and go to the office. There's nothing I'd rather do than go down to that bourse floor and buy and sell coins. I'm a coin dealer, always have been. Uh, I love what you all do building your sets. Glad PCGS and all of us coin dealers can help you. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you very much, Harvey, John, and Scott. Thank you. <laughs>